and the seed time on the project website. Uh, let me just introduce you the Mr. Bonventis, uh, the the person will lead the training session today. It's your the floor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Massimo Bonventi. You can call me Max, so it's more easy to talk with us. I'm a psychologist, and uh, I follow training. I'm involved in the training of people since I was with the short pants. So <laughs> first of all, I want to thank the Regione Friuli Venezia Giulia that, is, that, that organizes this session. Uh, I hope you want to be involved quite uh, quite hard in, during this this day. We are, we will talk about uh, disability, uh, so d dividing in in three parts. In three parts, the first part we will talk about disability, motor disability. First of all, the law, the Italian law, and the international law about the name of disability. The second part. We will talk about um, motorial sense disability, and the third part there, we will talk about the perceptual disability. So, I'll try myself with the with the slides. The word culture, from Latin colere, to cultivate, is usually declined in two different but complementary concepts. The one humanistic, meaning individual education that allows to cultivate its own mind, including the features that identify a person as more or less cultured. The other anthropological, meaning as the totality of customs and traditions, convictions and certainties, attitudes and behaviors, values and ideals that each human group situated in a specific social and geographical context accomplishes daily to regulate interactions and relations among singles and through groups. If something is not clear, please stop me immediately. UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, defines culture as a series of specific characteristics of a society or social group from a spiritual, material, intellectual or emotional standpoint. From this point of view, culture is pinpointed by three basic characteristics. The first one, Culture is learned and is not reducible at only human biological dimension. For instance, the color of the skin is not a cultural feature, but a genetic characteristic. The second one represents, culture represents the totality of the social and physical ambient created by man. And the third one, culture is shared inside a group or a society and it is distributed homogeneously inside. Therefore, culture is not an exterior dimension of life. It is practical consciousness connected to personal experience that becomes also theory through a conceptual network always more complex according to supply coming from external world, from experiences and others, and from how much we were able to transmit personal interior and exterior world of the reference epoch. This day is not and doesn't want to be just a meeting of information and or training more or less ritualistic about disability. This day has the ambition to make culture. 
that is to train and to attract interest about how to improve assistance to disability. Putting on the tables this question. If I would be disabled, what could, what could be my needs or how I would react in this situation? Understand me? Is it clear? Okay. In the current global village, characterized by societies always more multi-ethnic and then multicultural, intercultural communication is the most crucial instrument of cooperation and social peace. As a consequence of what just said, each individual belonging to a specific ethnic, social, linguistic, or any other kind of community has developed and, can, and continue to develop a mental software properly conformed for better living inside the belonging community and to remain connected with any other individual of the same community. Mental software. Besides, this mental software contains also information and extractions to better engage with the disability world. Is it clear right now? Can we continue? Okay, thank you. Disability. Disability is the personal condition of an individual that following one or more impairment, has a reduced capacity of interaction with social ambient compared that is considered a rule, therefore is less self-governing in making daily usual activities and often disadvantaged in participating to social life. The process of insertion of disabled in the society of normal people has been step by step refined up to become a real process of integration. The term social integration means something profound as the insertion of different identities in a unique context where there is not a discrimination in sight. Disability is not a universal concept, but very often is, its definition is in relation with the seeker and or the kind of social research in progress. At the present time, it doesn't exist an interna at the international level a unique definition of the term, even if the concept of disability has been debated during United States Nations Organization Convention for the Rights of People with Disability to draw up a final document approved by General Assembly on August 25, 2006. ICIDH classification. The International Classification of Impairment, Disabilities, and Handicap distinguished through impairment agreed as loss of abnormality regarding a psychological, physiological, or anatomical structure of function and represents extension of a pathological state. If that dysfunction is congenital, we talk about disablement. Disability or any limitation of capacity to act a natural consequence of a state of impairment, impairment and disablement. And handicap, disadvantage lived by someone falling disability or disablement. This means that while disability is agreed like the disadvantage that the individual shows at personal level, handicap represents the social disadvantage of a person with disability. Not personal, but social. Usually, we talk about handicap to describe 
a physical disadvantage without taking into account the intimate emotions that arise when this word is used. Word that can cause in the disabled a feeling of inconvenience and anger for the situation. Even in television, very often use the term handicap to describe the situation of a person disabled without taking into account the situation of inconvenience that can arise in a person. The aforesaid classification has shown a series of limitations along the time. For instance, it does not consider that disability is a, a dynamic concept, as it just can be only temporary. Moreover, it is difficult to establish a limit further that a person can be considered disabled. It must be also pointed, that, pointed out that a person can be impaired without being disabled. In the ICIADH, only pathological factors are considered, while as far as limitation or facilitations about the autonomy of the person is concerned. A decisive role is played by environmental factors. In the 90 years, World Health Organization has commissioned to a group of experts to reformulate the classification, taking into account these concepts. The new classification, denominated ICF, International Classification of Functioning, defines the state of health of people rather than limitations, declaring that healthy individual is identified as an individual in a state of psychophysical health capsizing the concept of health. Furthermore, it introduced a classification of environmental factors. ICF, the new standard. The concept of disability changes according to the new classification, approved by almost the totality of the states adhering ONU, United Nation, Nations, and becomes an umbrella where under that identify the difficulties of functioning of a person, both at personal level and a social participation. In this classification, biomedical and pathological factors are not the only taken into account, but it is considered also the social interaction. The approach in this way becomes multi-perspective, biologic, personal, social. The same use of the terminology indicates this change of perspective, as the word impairment, disability, and handicap that attested the mainly medical approach are substituted by the terms body structures, activity, and participation. So, a matter of fact, the standard becomes more complex, as also the social factors are taken into account, and not only those organic. The difference between the two perspectives. The ICIDH was coherent with an organicistic perspective, and the starting point was always the unhealthy state, congenital or turned up disease, accident, which origins as an impairment agreed as functional, physical, or psychic loss or abnormality that get involved the body. This impairment can become a disability, agree as a limitation of the person during usual day daily activities, while this can carry to handicap, in other words, to social advantage that appears in the interaction with ambient. The perspective of ICF instead is multidimensional 
And it is not limited only to organic factors, defined functions, and bodily structure. Effectively, the whole ICF method is fundamentally a repartition into macro categories, further on subdivided. Part one, functioning and disability, including organic factors. That means bodily structures, organs, and anatomic structures, generally speaking, and bodily functions, the physiological functions accomplished on these structures. And the second one is the contextual factors. Ambient factors relative to physical social ambient. And personal factors consisting in the capacity of interaction with the physical social ambient. Differently able, a new paradigm for in 1999, the WHO has published the new International Classification of Impairments, Personal Activities, X Disability, and Social Participation, X Handicap or Existential Disadvantage, called ICDH2. In particular, with personal activities are considered the limitations considering nature, duration, and qualities that a person suffers during his activity at every level of complexity due to a structural or functional impairment. Based on this definition, each person is differently able. A person is relatively handicapped, in other words, Handicap is a relative, not an absolute fat fact, just on the contrary of what we say about the deficit. In other words, an amputation cannot be denied and therefore is absolute. The disadvantage, so the handicap, instead is relative to life and to work conditions, therefore to the reality where the amputated is collocated. Handicap is therefore an encounter between guy and the situation. On May 22, 2001, WHO reaches a statement about an innovative instrument of classification, multidisciplinary and with a an universal approach. International classification of functioning, disability and health denominated ICF. 192 governments that constitute Health World Assembly have participated to the elaboration of this classification. The first innovative aspect of the classification can be found just in its title, the universal application of ICF emerges from the fact that disability is not considered as a problem of a minority group inside the community but an experience that everybody can go through during the whole life. WHO, by, the way, by way of ICF, submits a model of universal disability relevant for whichever normal or differently able person. Against, some years ago, some disabled person had an acute and proud intuition to underline how, even suffering an important impairment, are able to produce, realize, and be competitive with the rest of the world. And sometimes that's true. To define this condition, they have coined the neologism differently able. In that context, and at that time, that neologism could have a sense, perhaps. That because it has been emphasized the concept of ability at any effort, competition, running towards a normalogate normality with all the paradoxes they are contained. Why? But there are people, much more than what you think, whose principal and vital need isn't to find a work or a named 
collocation, but that of get assured a service to a, of a system that can help in elevate the unbearable everyday heaviness for their relatives to which social services have delegated to the survival. They are people very seri seriously handicapped. And if this term hurts some sensibility, we could call them people differently hospitalized. People that cannot be interested to the accessible tourism or at the possibility to drive, or at the telematic services, or at participation at civil battles. Their worries are banally to survive. Sometimes, nevertheless, public social assistance services. And if, and if those services will be cut off, they will not say anything, because they don't have a representative voice. Nothing but differently something. Possible synthesis. The expression differently able emphasizes the qualitative difference in the use of abilities and is used to specify that through different modalities is it possible to reach the same goals there are situations of disability when this use can be adequate. For instance, students not sighing or less sighting can reach just the same appropriate educational and social results using residual visual resources, increasing with special instruments. Yeah. Or compens compensative abilities, for instance, those verbal. There are other situations, as those regarding the two-thirds of all certified, certificated students, that is, those with mental disease in which the terminology differently able can conduce out of way. Let's consider a case of a typical stud student affected by Down syndrome. From the quality of life standpoint, perhaps you, you can also say that using his own abilities, he can anyway reach goals compared to those of all other people. In other words, he can reach a wellness that cannot be considered lower. It is the reference point, the expression differently able could even be used instead if the reference point becomes that of scholastic, social, or, and independent performances, the expression differently able can result misleading because it hidden the fact that really these performances are lower comparing to those typical of normality. I take a, I take a brief. Every, everything okay up to now? Well, we talk about the, 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 the movement impairment. Usually, the mutual impairment descends from a traumatic or congenital event and produces a reduction about the capacity to move a specific part of the body. The consequence is the necessity to be helped in making some maneuvers, taking into account that these people can see, speak, and hear. So the real barriers are those architectural. Anyhow, to facilitate movements and maneuvers, they can make entrustment on the following supports. Autonomy, all the supports, the supports, the supports are instrument not necessarily designed for people with movements impairment, useful to prevent, compensate, or mitigate an impairment, a disability, or an handicap. 
They can be a sing, simple expedient or a sophisticated device that contributes to the autonomy of people disabled, to improving the quality of his life, to facilitate instant and assistance. Let, let's think, for instance, on just a stick to put our weight. No? Support, for, as far as integration is concerned, the supports are instrument useful to integrate disabled in the work, school and cultural world, and often constitute a very important prerequisite to prosecute a project of independent life. Which supports? These are four groups of supports based on their characteristics and purpose. There are technical supports. Support. They are most of the supports useful to facilitate relocation and activities of disabled in domestic, ambient, and on external. This category can be divided in uh, supports for mobility that can be subdivided in uh, the ambulation devices used to improve static equilibrium or, of a subject, difficulty or total inability to walk about. This category includes walking sticks, for instance, crutches, Tripods, the ambulatories, fixed or jointed with wheels or not. Stabilization devices used to reach and maintain upright position. And wheelchairs used when the ambulation is impossible or seriously compromised to allow autonomy relocation. Uh, this category includes manual or electric wheelchair. Hmm? Sub technical support, supports. Supports for mobility, posture and anti decubital systems. They allow to the disabled to maintain a position as correct and comfortable as possible throughout special seat bags, pillows, and mattress. Then there are supports for transports. They facilitate the numerous transports to cope with the many usual needs of the day life, like from wheelchair to bed, or to WC, or to shower, or to car, and vice versa. One example for all, elevators or charging device to put the wheelchair into a car. and support for everyday life. They facilitate managing of domestic activities with less effort and more safety, especially as far as domestic objects and personal hygiene are concerned. Is it clear up to now? May I continue? Are you just annoyed? I had to to make this introduction before uh, talk about how to manage with the people. Okay, that's why. Information technology supports. They, can, they help to facilitate communication, autonomy, and social integration, generally speaking. They include personal computer and relative hardware, educational and real, real Habilitative software and detector, detectors. Detectors are instruments that transform mechanical energy, energy into 
electric signal so that just one limited voluntary movement can control one or many electric and electronic uses, users. Then there are the domestic accessibility, accessibility supports to better organize the domestic spaces accordingly with proper functional capacities. Proper electronic instruments may contribute to enjoy the domestic everyday life. And then the community, communicators. Communication difficulties generate problems that especially with children can cause inconveniences to their personality and cognitive development. There are two kinds of communicators. Alphabetica, where the prerequisite is the capacity of reading and writing. Symbolic, where is sufficient association icon to message to communicate. The supports must be intended as instruments to facilitate human relations and to better express the quality of the person independently of, the, of his functional limits. Let's think about the, the toys of the children, of the very young children. Of the, when uh, parents make the situation that the children can choose between uh, colors, between uh, uh, shapes of some objects, uh, or between the, the numbers, or between the alphabetical letters. But if you give to a little boy uh, a PC computer or a tablet, he works with the icon, with the image. Voila. Any question? Any question? Reflections, considerations, please. One at a time, please. Don't push. <laughs> uh, I want to thank also people that are uh, seen to us by streaming. And so welcome also to their people. Can we go on? Are you tired? We go? Perception. It's quite easy. When, when you see uh, people on a wheelchair, uh, you don't have any problem to get in touch with him, to, to help him. Usually the people can talk, can hear, but uh, since the perception, but uh, um, disab perce perceptual disabilities are very different. What's perception? What is? The difference between sensation and perception. There's a difference. Sensation means sensorial experience, visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, gustatory, kinesthetic, proprioceptic. The, social, the sensory experience descends from the reaction of to internal and, and external physical and physiological stimulus recognized by senses. Perceptual experience instead descends from subjective processing of data furnished by senses, based on studies, works, passions, interests, uses and everything being part of personal past up to that moment. For instance, with experience number one, we can learn that a given food is toxic. With experience number two, on the basis of the experience number one, we can choose an alternative food. Is it clear? To be converted in perceptions, sensations must be integrated with information coming from past experiences. For instance, complaints due to toxic food on the basis 
basis of prevalent interest, for instance, to continue to eat. Predicting a new action, for instance, to select a more healthy food. Perception, it's an interpretation process of given data that is of help to give meaning to the situation we are living. The resulting meeting is the truth of the perceiver and even if, if various persons possess the same information and observe the same situation, the perception can change extensively by person to person. The basic element of the perceptual process is the selection guided by our personal characteristics, the features of the object and the situation where the perception occurs. Last night there was a wonderful moon. Did you see the moon? So big, so lighted. And uh, I, I was driving on the car on the freeway and I was enchanted by that vision because uh, I saw another world and it makes me sense the universe. But perhaps for uh, two lovers that has been a very romantic uh, <laughs> situation. The moon was just the same. Huh? <laughs> All right. For instance, Inuit, <laughs> Inuit people doesn't have the concept corresponding to what other people call snow. Inuit <laughs> really perceive many different kinds of snow depending on its particular characteristics and its possible application and have different concepts for it. There is, there is a good reason for this. For this. Their survival depends on the snow. Many stimulus reach the person, but only some pass beyond the first stage, <clears throat> becoming part of of their experience, and then used to express opinions. The rest is left out. Another fundamental element is the organization of the perceptions. While we receive information from ambient, we assemble certain stimulus in schemes that give significance to all instead of proceeding randomly. The way how these information are assembled depends from personal reference scheme. An example is the words you are reading. The single letters are ignored to favor the whole word. All right? Every, even physical and emotional Interior events can modeling and so determining the perception of reality. When a person is hunger, sight and sounds indicate food become indicating food become the principal elements of perception. But emotional situations can distort this perception. It has been widely demonstrated, for instance, that the perceptions of ocular witnesses of a crime very, very often aren't accurate and that is just related to the emotional state of the moment when they attend at the crime scene. Some ocular witnesses report facts never happened and give excessive attention to very little or very particular details. Before going on, do you want to make a little break? No? We continue? We will make the break afterwards? Okay. Space perception. We are talking about perception. Space perception. 
our space perception is three-dimensional. Length, height, and depth. It depends on the exact representative schemes that we have made about the space occupied by our person. This space is the constant reference point between us and the objects around us. An object is perceived, perceived in the space because it has a position, a posi it has a position in the ambient and is oriented towards a direction with respect to us and other objects, left, right, forward, behind, high, low. The object, in other words, is at a certain distance, has a certain shape, a color, and have a certain movement. To perceive space means to perceive the geometric characteristic of the things. However, the bright stimulus produces on the retina two-dimensional images. So that we ask, the three-dimensional perception of space is a natural disposition or acquisition of experience. Trying to solve the problem that for certain aspects is still open, it has been said that stimulus coming from the perception of an object show characteristics that allow to put it at the same distance on the basis of our previous experience. Following some examples. Familiar sights. The sights of an object that belongs to a class of familiar objects, on the basis of the past experience, give us an indicator of its distance. For instance, if we see a faraway car, we percept it not as a toy model or more a little than normal, the normal one, but as a normal car just coming far from us. Interposition. If the image of an object covers partially the image of another object, the first is perceived at nearest than the second one. Linear perspective. The experience produces the perception that objects with a, vi a little visual angle are more distant. For instance, the last threes of a boulevard are very little, but we perceive the same perspective. Aerial perspective. If the surface of an object is not perceived as precisely detailed, the object is situated more far than others. Light, shadow, and color. Different brightness, intensity, this different brightness intensity furnish distance indicators. Space perception, time perception. The only time that we, that we can really perceive is the present. Past, it doesn't exist. Future, it doesn't exist. Past entrusted to memory and future entrusted to imagination. Our representations deduced through analogy and always connected with the present. For instance, it's impossible to imagine a future completely different from present, as it's impossible to describe the past in a faithful way. way. It's impossible. We, rem we remember the fact of the past plus all other details that we added by our experiences. That's why it's so difficult after years and years to stabilize if uh, the, the, the that car has passed with green or, uh, or red. When the legal process 
during uh, in, and you so much. You lost the fidelity. We can see exactly what would happen to us. Because our brain, our memory, is projected to complete information, to add information, to add information. Age influences, age influences the perception, so that for a teenager, time passes too much slowly because he wants to reach in a hurry the independence promised by maturity, while for an adult, time passes too much in a hurry because he has the perception that his life is finishing. Albert Einstein was used to say about uh, relative, relativity. One minute pass with the beautiful woman are very different by one minute pass on the <laughs> stove. <laughs> Always 60 seconds, but the perception is really different. Hmm? In addition, sentimental and emotional feelings may the passage time long or short lasting. For instance, boredom makes it, makes it long, pleasure makes it short. Object perception, let's say, okay. object perception. Our daily experience teaches us that we don't perceive single stimulus whose sum bring to bring us to recreate the object. But we see immediately the objects in their permanent unity. For instance, we perceive immediately that a book is a book without open or leaf through, through it. And we see these objects as distinct from other objects adjacent. For instance, a, purse, a pencil placed on a paper sheet, we see the pencil distinct from the sheet. But the facts demonstrate that the physical world of an object not always corresponds exactly with the world that we can perceive, the phenomenal world. A phenomenon can be perceived also without being present, or on the contrary, being present but unable to see it, or even we see a thing different, but by what reality really is, for instance, war an animal camouflage, optical illusions, mirage. Often senses mislead us and only experience help us to catch the truth. It's always a question of our personal experience. Illusions have internal psychic subjective origin Sometimes an illusion is due to an emotional state. For instance, if at home we are alone and have fear, any little noise will make us suspicious. This is what to teach us that perception is not a photographic copy of external reality, but is a psychic function that processes data furnished by sensorial receptors subordinating the single sensation to a certain totality so that the particulars take different meaning, meanings accordingly with the belonging totality. Perception of totality always disclose that, that of single parts. In other words, the more common way to perceive an object is that of global perception. The analysis of logic connection comes later, and this allows to really possess an object. Perceptual constancy. It's the tendency of perception to maintain Constant characteristics along time and space. The perceptual constancy allows to take decisions 
always based on real objects and environmental characteristics, even if the situations around are changed. In other words, constant phenomena permit to recognize objects even in the more different and bad situation. For instance, loss of brightness. Constancies can be of four types, the following. Bulk. A person tall 170 meter appears to maintain his own bulk even if he is far, far away two meters or 10 meters. Nevertheless, the dimensions of the image on the retina change considerably. You mean retina, it's part of the, 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 part of the, of, of, of the eye? No, it's part of the brain. Retina is made by nervous cellar, by neurons. It's not the eye that see, it's the brain. It's the brain that, that, that give significance to the information. Shape. A disc put inclined appear as a circle and so the image projected on the retina is an ellipse. The image is an ellipse, but the interpretation of the brain is a disc. Color. If we observe a white object lighted by a red light, it will always be perceived as white. We see it's red, but we perceive perceive that it's white. In the clarity, observing a black paper, uh, observing a black paper at the window light, it will continue to appear black even if reflected light, light is very considerable. Okay? Well, now we make a stop. <laughs> we make a break, a coffee break. Huh? Yes, 20 minutes just to refresh, okay? Thank you for the attention. <laughs>